Oh man, this is looking so cool. Oh yeah. So in the last episode we put the rear lights in uh, on the camera and then all I've done since then is actually just connect all the red wires to this green which goes to the other side red and then all the black ones I connected to this orange and black and then I tied all those together so uh, what I've been doing all along is as I make the next step I actually test them out with the battery because I want to make sure that my connections are working and I don't get too far along in the process without having actually checked stuff. So uh, going ahead to the front end, we had the front lights put in last time and so it was time to get the headlights in and if you remember from the part one video, one of the troubles is that the light socket is a five millimeter receptacle which is great except that I only have warm white LEDs in the three millimeter size so I had to make this adapter so this is what it turned out to be uh, this is a, like I whipped this up in the CAD design in no time flat and then I stuck it on the 3D printer okay so all this really is is just a sleeve it's like you can actually do this with a piece of styrene tube as well you don't have to you have a 3D printer to do this you can use a five millimeter to three millimeter tube there is such a thing uh, pretty simple. I think it's also 532 to 18 or something like that. I forget. If you have an imperial tube, there is one that works. I think it's 3 16 to 1 8. That one also works. I've used that one too. So basically this little bump here on top, that thing actually just sticks into the socket hole. It sticks right in where the 5 millimeter LED base would have sat in the light socket. So that fits in there like that. And then I've got this little three millimeter hole on the end and my LED just went right in there. So this is all it looks like here. Uh, that's it. No more complicated than that. So we've got the socket on the back of the light and then the little black adapter and then I stuck my three millimeter in there. And these have also been shaved off. If you saw the last video what I do is take the, I shave off, I sand off the ball, the round end ball off of the LED so it's just flat straight across. There's no round lip on the end of the LED. I did that also to the warm whites to kind of just dull them out. I, you got a bit of a glimpse of that at the beginning of the video but we'll talk about that later. So the next step here is to actually take all of these hot wires, all the grounds and actually tie them all in together. I'm going to be doing uh, just two connections. That's it. I'm going to do an everything hot wire, an everything ground wire, and then I'm going to put them to the chassis. So let's do that and uh, we'll see what that looks like. So I'm working in the front here and I decided what I'm going to do first is actually um, I'm not going to string the lights to the back yet. I'm going to secure all the wires in the front first. So what I decided to do is, uh, because I'm, I'm doing the, the negative side over here and the positive side all down here, I'm going to do the joint here up behind the dash, or behind the grill, sorry. So uh, what I'm going to do first is actually secure all of these down below the hood line. Now, I have zero expectations of cutting the hood off of this and making an opening hood, but you know how it is. Projects evolve, and so you just kind of... You never know. So anyways, I'm going to make sure that all of the wiring here is actually below the hood line. That's my goal. So first of all, I'm going to hot glue all of these here. And then I'm going to hot glue all of these down in a nice bundle here. And then when they get to the center, I'm going to split them for the, all the negatives and all the positives. And then I'll start on the wiring loom to the back. Now for the loom, what I'm using for the loom is actually this stuff here. This is... Um, it's like a Chinese finger grip or whatever they call these. Um, I bought this on a huge roll. If you guys have never used this stuff, I highly, highly recommend getting a roll of this stuff. It's cost a few bucks, maybe 20 bucks or something to get 100 feet of this. This is the quarter inch size stuff. And as you can see, 
when you push on it, it gets way, way, way bigger, like almost twice its size on the inside of the hole diameter. So that's how you get it over your wires. Now, what I do with this stuff is I cut it off with an X-Acto knife, and then I burn it with the with a torch I burn it with a lighter or something so because it's made out of acrylic it just literally like disappears it just it just vanishes as soon as you get any heat on it at all it just sort of evaporates and immediately I jam a set of needle nose pliers in the end of it I jam it right in like I'll show you what I mean And then I let that cool uh, while the pliers are in it. So I hit it with the torch or with a lighter, and then it gets all gooey at the end. I jam the pliers in real quick. And then what that means is that now I have a really easy space to feed my long distance wiring. So we're going to use this stuff to go down the side of the vehicle so I don't see it from the interior. That's the whole point. Uh, let me get on to doing this here, and we'll come back. So I got these all pigtailed here. I got all the pluses pigtailed in the middle, all the minuses. All I did was glue it there just at the one edge with the hot glue. And uh, of course I said this a million times. I'm going to say it again. Test everything before you get too far. So uh, I'm going to check this right now. If I can do this with one hand. There we go. Check everything. And those are all working. Okay. Now I can move on to the next step and actually wire these towards the rear lights. Let's do that. That's it. It's hard to believe that it's in there, but I stuck it right in the body groove. It's flat. Really, really flat. Like, it's so, 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 so flat. And it runs the entire length right down the bump side on, or the dent side on the forward body. And then you go up to the front, and when you get up to the front here, uh, the wire just pops out of the loom there, this one. And then it's soldered and hot, uh, hot shrink wrapped on here. So, boom, done. And now that wire goes all the way to the back, and it pops out here so that I can use it for the rear lights positive and get all that wired up. Same thing on the other side. So there's the back. Uh, we got this nice, you can't even see it, the loom there that goes down the side. All the way down. The one on this side. All the way down. And then that gets tied through this uh, jumbled pile of wires which I uh, hot glued flat onto the back here and uh, we're going to cover that up, you'll never know it's there. And then I left these two big tags sticking out here so I've got the plus tag, the minus tag and I've said this a million times but test everything. And there we go. So I can see from the inside here that they're lit I got three LEDs lit there, three lit on that side, and that's just great. I can just barely see them through the back. And I got my side markers and my tail lights. So I know everything's working, and now I can get to the actual uh, attachment here to get some receiver power to these, so we're going to work on that next. So now I've got the two uh, little uh, blocks done give you a real close-up on that so basically this is I just whipped up this little 3d print design here it, all it is is a little kind of a magnet carrier you could even do this with a few layers of styrene like you don't have to get to the printer stuff and then I stuck that huge bunch of wire that was all sort of stripped out you can see it under the magnet there I stuck it I laid it in the hole there's a little notch in the side for the wire to fit through I laid that in the hole and then I put a whole bunch of CA in the hole and then I chucked a magnet in the hole 
and I actually squished it in the with that little vise right there so it would get hard and uh, there it is so I've got plenty I'm pretty sure I got plenty of wire making contact with the magnet and the other side of the magnet will uh, actually just make contact with the one on the truck so this is going to get glued on uh, right here that's it that's really easy or maybe in the corner probably a little more but you get the idea and then when the body gets put on the other magnet is going to be right here on the back of the truck so like this will be here this will have a wire at the bottom of it that will go to the receiver on the one side hot one side negative and then when the body goes on the magnets will just go click and connect to each other as best they can there's a little bit of flex here in this styrene which is kind of why I want to put the magnet as far outboard as I can because then it'll have a little bit of flex in case it has to wiggle around a bit uh, so that's the goal and I'm going to try to get those mounted and then we'll see how it goes so it's pretty strange it might be the strangest thing you ever did see but uh, just to give you some context there's the side of the truck and that's what that looks like in there and the magnet is just going this one is going to be attached to the floor of the vehicle on the interior so they will make contact and conduct electricity I think well that's uh, pretty hard to see in there but you can see now there's the there's the big magnet on the floor and the floor is pretty flexible eh? so it's making contact with the top magnet on the back edge of the round big round magnet so that's fine and the floor is pretty flexible but the floor itself can't go up anymore without actually lifting the body so I know the magnets are touching and uh, I just gotta wait for all that stuff to dry I put some E6000 on the magnets to get them to um, glue in there trying to look in the window here so you can see and that looks like a mess but I have a really cool idea to clean all that up so we're gonna deal with that when they're all dry and I want to show you what I did on the bottom to hold them in uh, magnets of course are make like to make contact through material right so on the bottom here I just took a whole big stack of extra magnets and I just slammed them in underneath the styrene underneath the floor because that will pull down the magnet above the floor right onto the floor so that'll make sure that the glue joint is really solid through the body because those magnets actually go into that magnet there and the other one in the other corner so that's the story with those now the next thing to do is to uh, wait for all that to dry and then we can wire in the receiver and get it covered up well we got it working so uh, there's how these got done you can see here there's uh, there's nothing underneath I took that magnet base that I had on there off because that was just to hold this down for gluing and so uh, I scratched it up a little bit to make sure that I had some actual raw styrene to glue the magnet to and the E6000 or Shugu whatever you want to use I use for that and then you can see the wire is just kind of looped through here uh, there's the wire right there it just spray, splayed out and then wrapped underneath the magnet and through the hole and on the top here just to keep it from falling off I put a little bit of CA on the top just to kind of keep it from falling off while I was gluing it so I got the two wires here they run all the way down through this piece of loom under the console and the carpet and then I plug it right into the receiver right there that's it and there we have the wiring so now when the body comes off the magnets here will break contact with the body uh, magnets on those little blocks and we have power or not power depending on if the body's off or on so how about that uh, now we're gonna cover it all up and we're going to use a whole bunch more of this stuff. 
I put a little bit of hot glue underneath there a couple spots just to secure the loom on there the wire actually isn't really attached in the loom so if you had to service it you could still pull this with a wire in or out of the loom uh, but of course as I say absolutely test everything so now I've got to uh, plug this all in and make sure it works okay this is the carpet for the main uh, body of the truck for the main interior in the cargo area I didn't put it on yet for a reason so this is the back side hey remember this oh man you're not even gonna believe how easy this is boom there it is oh my goodness that was easy so we're gonna drop this on here like this and this is a real shocker it fits I know it's a bit of a surprise so that's going to go down like that, that goes like that, that goes like that, that fits around there like that. So obviously we're covering up our two magnet points here. So what I'm going to do is actually half cut the magnet off. So I just leave the back half of the magnet for the contact area. And then we're going to schweezel this thing down in here in between the seats and all that and get it all stuck on. And, uh, and then we'll be ready for an inst- Oh yeah. This is incredible. So look inside here. Uh, I want to show you guys kind of how covered up this turned out to be. So simple carpet in the back. Okay, simple carpet. If I can get into there, I won't do it today. Trying to get in to show you the detail in there, but it won't do it. Uh, so, covered up. Carpet. Look in the back window. It's all just regular carpet. Can't see the side wires. Turned out pretty good. Back lights. And you want to see how great this is? Watch this. Oh man, this is so cool. So I'm going to lift this up. I didn't put the clips on yet. Okay, watch the lights. They're still on the magnet. And then they disconnect. Check that out. That is so cool. So they're down in there. They're on the sides in there. And I've got all that carpet, covers all the wires. I added some black carpet on the back to uh, cover up the wiring so you can't see it from the inside. And then I also added some black carpet just behind the front headlights here. So I could keep that from getting uh, sticks and stuff caught in it. And that's it. So there we go. As soon as you pull that down, man, there it is. Boom. Check that out. That is so cool. Oh my goodness. And there we go. So the Bronco is lit. There's uh, no plug to plug in. You just simply put the body on and the switch is underneath. So whenever you turn that on, the lights will come on. That's amazing. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if this was really cool, can you please share this to some kind of group that you're in? And I'd really like to uh, get the information around. If you find that it's actually helpful for you, then feel free to share it with your group and smash the like button. And uh, we will see you on the next one because there's more. Bye-bye.